This lecture covers the CFA level 1 reading on output and costs. The first thing to consider is the time frame in decision making. And as you've seen in earlier lectures, we need to distinguish between the short run and the long run. The definition of the short run in this context is the time frame where quantities of some factors of production are fixed and other factors of production are not necessarily fixed. So make sure you understand what factors of production means. In simplistic terms, we can say that there are two main factors of production. One is capital, which is the physical machines and equipment used by firms. And the other major factor of production is labor. Okay, so at least in the context of this reading, we'll say that in the short run, plant and equipment is fixed because if you want to produce more, you can't suddenly expand your plant. And we will typically say that labor in the short run is not fixed. So labor can be increased or decreased in the short run, at least as far as this reading is concerned. So that's the short run. The definition of long run is that all factors of production can be adjusted. So keep those definitions in mind. Now, let's imagine that we are running a small factory where we manufacture chairs. And we are going to understand three different types of product curves. What does product mean? Product, again, in this context, simply means output. Product of labor means what is the output produced by labor. You need to understand three major types of product curves, total product, marginal product, and average product. Let's first look at total product. Total product simply is the total output produced. Obviously, as you increase the number of workers, the total product or output will increase. So in our chair factory, if we just employ one laborer, then let's say that our total product during a month is 10. As we increase the number of workers, the total product or output increases, which is what we would expect. So that is shown by this red curve over here. The x-axis is the quantity of labor and the y-axis for the red curve is the total product or the total output. What is the marginal product? The marginal product is the additional output produced when we have one more worker. So if the first worker produces 10 shares and then by bringing on the second worker we produce a total of 22 shares, the marginal product is 12. Why is it 12? Because the one additional laborer helped produce 12 more shares. So as you can see here, the, you know, so it was uh, quite efficient to bring on the second laborer. So two people working together actually managed to produce uh, 22 chairs, whereas one person alone was only producing 10 a month. But what happens when you bring on the third worker? Now the total product is 30, so that's gone up as you would expect but the marginal product is only 8. So this means that by bringing on the third worker, only 3 more chairs were produced. So as you can see in this green curve down here, which represents the marginal product, initially our marginal product went up, but then after that it started going down. So keep in mind the definition of marginal product is the output or product produced by each additional worker. And finally, the average product, this is simply the total product produced divided by the number of workers. So when you have one worker, 10 shares produced, 10 divided by 1 is 1. When you have 5 workers, if the total product is uh, 40, average product is 40 divided by 5, which is 8. And the blue line here in the graph represents our average product. Just another view of uh, 
average product and marginal product. Now imagine we have a, a factory where we produce tables and I just want to highlight a, a relationship between marginal product and average product which was not obvious in the previous graphs. But uh, look at this. The, the first graph that we are looking at here is the marginal product which if you recall was the additional product produced by each additional worker and the second graph over here is the average product which is the total output divided by the number of workers. The important point to note is that the marginal product curve intersects the average product at the point where average product is the maximum. Now why is this? The way you can think of this is as long as average product is higher as long as the marginal product is higher than average product that means that each additional worker is producing something that is more than the average. So what will that do to the average? That will pull the average up. So the average keeps going up as long as the marginal product is more than average product. But what happens when your marginal product is less than average product. So this means that the productivity of additional laborers is less than what our average was and hence the average will be pulled down. So effectively what's happening is our average after this point is coming down which explains why the marginal product curve will always intersect the average product at the point where average product is the maximum. A few simple curves that I'm sure most of you have seen before. These are basic cost curves. The first one that is drawn over here is your total fixed cost and as the term implies the total fixed cost remains the same as your quantity or your output increases. The x-axis here represents your output. The y-axis is the cost. So total fixed cost remains the same no matter what your output. So this is your investment in say in your capital. What is total variable cost? Total variable cost is the as you produce more and more goods your variable cost increases. All right, so the total variable cost will start at zero and keep going up as you produce more product. And what's total cost? Total cost is simply the sum of total fixed cost and total variable cost. Costs of production, uh, this is just uh, numerically showing uh, what we just saw plus adding in the concept of marginal cost. Now going back to our uh, factory where we produce chairs, what we are simply saying here is if the output is zero and labor is zero, we still need investment in capital. So we have a certain total fixed cost which here is 40. The total variable cost is zero because we've not produced anything. The total cost is 40 plus zero which is 40. Now, when we, when we have one laborer, let's say we produce 32 chairs. Our total fixed cost is the same. Let's say that our total variable cost when we produce 32 chairs is 40 and our total cost is 80. Now, what's our marginal cost? Our marginal cost is the cost of producing one additional chair. And how can we come up with this? The way we can come up with this is the marginal cost is the change in cost from here to here. So the change in cost is 40 divided by the change in output. What's the change in output from here to here? From 0 to 32. So the way you can come up with 1.25 is the change from 40 to 80 which is uh, 40 divided by the change from 0 to 32 which was 32. So 40 over 32 will give you 1.25 and similarly you can come up with the marginal cost numbers 0 0.83, 0 0.167 etc. So you are simply dividing the change in total cost divided by the change in 
output. Average fixed cost, as we've seen before, is uh, you take your total, you take your fixed cost divided by the output, and similarly, you can calculate average variable cost and average total cost. The important point to keep in mind with all these average costs is that it is based on, a, on, on one unit. So you are taking uh, the cost and dividing by the number of units. Make sure you can go through these numbers and understand exactly how we came up with them. Looking at, uh, uh, looking at the cost curves now, you need to be able to understand each one of these curves and you need to understand the relationship between them. So this is your average fixed cost. As you can see, the average fixed cost will go down as out increases. The fixed cost is constant, but fixed cost, so average fixed cost is your total fixed cost divided by quantity. As the quantity goes up, obviously your, your fixed cost is staying the same. So your average fixed cost will go down as quantity goes up. Marginal cost, so what we are saying here, this marginal cost curve can have different shapes. What this shape is implying is that initially as you increase output, the cost will go down. So basically we are seeing some efficiency. So you are increasing output initially as you increase output your cost per unit or your costs are going down. So the cost of producing every additional unit is going down. But after a certain point in time, the marginal cost then starts going up. What is the average variable cost? As we've just discussed, average variable cost is the variable cost divided by the number of units. And notice this important relationship. The marginal cost will intersect the average variable cost at the point where the average variable cost is at a minimum. The way you can understand this is, as long as your marginal cost, which is the cost of producing each new unit, is less than average, the average cost is going to be pulled downwards. And when your marginal cost is more than average variable cost, then the average variable cost will be pulled up. Hence, the point where the marginal cost intersects the average variable cost is the point where the average variable cost is at a minimum. And the same logic can be applied to show that the marginal cost curve will also intersect the average total cost at the point where the average total cost is at a minimum. A couple of other points to keep in mind here, and these are, and this is a, a potential question that might show up on your exam, which is the position of short run curves and what is it that determines the position of short run curves. Now, this is fairly intuitive. Let's say that there's an improvement in technology. So the chairs that you are producing, you can now do so with a machine that is half the cost. Or your new machines can produce twice the number of chairs in the same time. What will that do to your cost curves? What that will do to your cost curves is it will shift the cost curves downwards. What happens if there is a change in the prices of factors of production? As you can imagine, if prices go up, then all the cost curves will move upwards. And if prices go down, then all your cost curves will tend to move downwards, or the relevant cost curves will move downwards. Very straightforward. Let's look at the relationship between the product curves and the cost curves now. On the left hand side of the screen, you are looking at product curves. The first curve that you see is your marginal product. So as we discussed earlier, marginal product is the additional output for each additional unit of labor. So notice that in this region, our efficiency is improving. As we are adding more labor, our efficiency is improving, which means that our output is uh, improving. What's the relationship between this and the marginal cost curve? The relationship is the point where the average, uh, the, the point where the marginal product is a maximum, this is the point where the marginal cost curve, so if this is your marginal cost curve, 
the marginal cost curve is at a minimum where the marginal product is a maximum so this point 1 here will represent uh, is this corresponds to this point 1 over here where your marginal cost is at a minimum so marginal product max when marginal cost minimum and similarly the average product and average cost are also related so your average product is at a maximum where your uh, average cost average variable cost is at a minimum important points to realize and you know these little boxes over here just show you the relationship along three different segments of these graphs so in this segment as you notice marginal product is going up and average product is going up while marginal cost is going down and average variable cost is going down so clearly if you are in this region you need to be increasing your production to increase your efficiency and in this region you are inefficient because your marginal product is going down average product is going down and both your marginal cost and average variable cost are going down okay so that's your product and cost curves let's look at a production function now so far we simply looked at the production function in the context of labor but what you need to realize is there is also a production function for capital the way you can look at that is let's say that we are keeping our labor constant at let's say 40 hours a day now what will happen if your labor is constant but you are increasing your capital so as you increase capital uh, so actually the capital is represented by the top row so here we have one unit of capital so to just to make sure you can understand this grid this number 12 means that your output is 12 when you have 40 units of labor and one unit of capital 18 means that your output is 18 when you have 40 units of labor and two units of capital so notice that along this uh, row which I have uh, highlighted the labor is constant but capital is increasing as you increase your capital from 1 till 2 the increase in output is plus 6 and then here again the increase in output is plus 6 but then the output increases after that as you increase capital but by smaller amounts this concept is called the law of diminishing returns so for one so so for a given amount of labor as you keep throwing more capital you might have efficiency initially but eventually eventually there is this concept of diminishing returns that kicks in so just by throwing more capital at the same amount of labor doesn't mean that you can keep increasing output at uh, at a high rate okay uh, so so that's the concept of diminishing returns similarly if you have uh, if you if you look at let's say uh, let's say you are working with three units of capital as you move down what are we doing we are increasing labor so with three units of capital as you increase labor uh, here actually what we are looking at initially you increase um, you increase your output from 24 to 32 so by 8 units then again by 8 units 6 units 4 units 4 units so we see the concept of diminishing returns also just to complete the discussion on this slide the marginal product of capital uh, you've already understood the marginal product of labor which was the output produced by one more unit of labor so the analogous concept here is that the marginal product of capital is simply the the additional output by using one more unit of capital and now the last slide for this reading which simply shows us a long run average total cost curve now what you are seeing here is a typical long run average total cost uh, what's going on here on the x axis you have output on the y axis you have average uh, your average unit cost 
what you will see at a number of companies is that initially as you increase output the cost average unit cost will go down so the average unit cost will be at a minimum for some range of output so at this range we say we are uh, producing optimally so this amount then becomes the optimum amount produced and as you keep producing more your average cost starts going up so here we are inefficient economists call this region the region where we have diseconomies of scale and the region on the left is the region where we have economies of scale so economies of scale means that as you are producing more your average unit cost is going down if you have a region over here where the average unit cost is remaining constant then that part is called the so so we say that in this region we have a constant return to scale